The idea of an operating system exodus sounds dramatic, almost cinematic, like a mass migration driven by frustration, fatigue, and a sense that something fundamental has changed. When people hear the phrase the great OS exodus and connect it to Linux, it immediately triggers strong reactions. For decades, Linux has been the refuge, the rebel, the alternative. It has been the operating system people turn to when they are tired of corporate control. Invasive updates, licensing fees, and closed ecosystems. So asking whether 2026 might be the year everyone ditches Linux feels almost paradoxical. Why would people abandon the very platform that promised freedom, transparency, and control? To understand why this question is even being asked, we have to look at how Linux arrived at its current position, how the computing landscape has changed, and what pressures are quietly building beneath the surface. Linux was never supposed to be for everyone in the beginning. It emerged as a hacker's project, a kernel stitched together by volunteers, driven by curiosity and ideology rather than profit. Over time, it grew into something massive, underpinning servers, supercomputers, smartphones, embedded systems, and entire cloud infrastructures. Ironically, Linux became so successful in the background that its role on the desktop always felt secondary, almost optional. Desktop Linux users often saw themselves as a minority, but a proud one. They accepted rough edges, inconsistent interfaces, and occasional breakage in exchange for control, privacy, and the feeling of being part of something principled. That trade-off defined Linux culture for years, and for a long time it worked. But the world of computing in 2026 looks very different from the world where Linux culture formed. The average user today doesn't think in terms of operating systems the way they once did. They think in terms of apps, services, subscriptions, and ecosystems. Their work lives in browsers, cloud dashboards, collaboration tools, and streaming platforms. For many people, the operating system has become almost invisible, a thin layer that boots the machine and launches a browser. This shift alone has weakened the emotional bond many users once had with their OS of choice, including Linux. When everything important runs in the cloud, the question quietly changes from which operating system do I believe in, to which environment gives me the least friction. That question is where cracks begin to appear in the Linux story. Linux distributions have always prided themselves on choice, but that same abundance has increasingly become a source of confusion and fatigue. New users are confronted with dozens of distributions, each claiming to be beginner-friendly, stable, or powerful, yet each with its own quirks. Package formats compete instead of converge. Snap, Flatpak, AppImage, traditional package managers, and source builds all coexist in a way that excites enthusiasts but overwhelms newcomers. Even experienced users sometimes feel exhausted by the constant decisions, configurations, and trade-offs. In a world that increasingly values simplicity and predictability, Linux's flexibility can start to feel like a burden rather than a benefit. Another pressure point is hardware. Historically, Linux struggled with hardware support, but over the years it improved dramatically. Still, as hardware becomes more specialized and proprietary, new challenges emerge. Modern laptops rely heavily on firmware, custom drivers, and tight integration between hardware and software. Power management, fingerprint readers, higher fresh displays, advanced GPUs, and AI accelerators often work best on platforms that vendors explicitly support. While Linux support has improved, it often lags behind, requiring workarounds or waiting for community-driven solutions. For a developer or power user, this is an acceptable inconvenience. For a student, content creator, or professional who just wants everything to work out of the box, it can be the deciding factor that pushes them away. Then there is the changing nature of software development itself. In the past, Linux thrived because it was the natural home of developers. Today, development tools are increasingly abstracted, away from the underlying OS. Containers, virtual machines, remote development environments, and cloud-based IDs mean that a developer can use almost any operating system and still access a Linux environment when needed. Windows Subsystem for Linux blurred the lines even further, allowing developers to run Linux tools seamlessly inside Windows. Mac OS with its Unix foundations and polished ecosystem continues to attract developers who want both power and refinement. As a result, Linux no longer holds the exclusive appeal it once did for people who code for a living. Privacy and control, once Linux's strongest selling points, are also being recontextualized. 
Linux is still more transparent than most mainstream operating systems, but the average user's understanding of privacy has changed. Many people now accept that their data lives in the cloud and that services track behavior across platforms. They evaluate privacy at the service level rather than the operating system level. If their browser, email, and messaging apps are the same everywhere, the OS feels less relevant to the privacy conversation. This shift doesn't mean privacy no longer matters, but it does mean Linux's advantage in this area is less visible and less emotionally compelling to new generations of users. The desktop environment situation adds another layer to the story. Linux desktops have made incredible progress, but fragmentation remains. GNOME, KDE, XFCE, Cinnamon, and others each have their own philosophies and design languages. That diversity is a strength, but it also makes it hard to present a unified identity to the outside world. Meanwhile, other platforms invest heavily in cohesive design, accessibility, and user experience research. They may be more restrictive, but they feel more polished to the average user. When people compare experiences rather than ideologies, polish often wins. The rise of AI-assisted computing further complicates the picture. Modern operating systems are increasingly integrating AI features at a deep level, from voice assistance to image processing, search, and automation. These features often rely on massive proprietary models and tight integration with cloud services. Linux, being decentralized and community-driven, faces challenges here. While there are open-source AI tools and frameworks, integrating them into a seamless desktop experience is difficult without centralized funding and coordination. As AI becomes a standard expectation rather than a novelty, platforms that can deliver it smoothly gain an edge, even if that delivery comes at the cost of openness. Another subtle factor is generational change. Younger users entering the computing world in the 2020s often start on smartphones and tablets. Their first experiences with computing are app-centric, touch-driven, and deeply integrated with cloud accounts. When they move to desktops or laptops, they bring those expectations with them. Linux, which often requires conceptual understanding of file systems, permissions, and configuration, can feel alien. Even when distributions try to abstract these details away, the underlying complexity sometimes leaks through. For users who never learned to think in terms of traditional desktop computing, this can be a barrier. So does all of this mean 2026 will be the year everyone ditches Linux? The answer depends on what we mean by everyone and what we mean by ditches. Linux is not a monolith, and its role in the computing ecosystem is far broader than the desktop. In servers, cloud infrastructure, networking, and embedded systems, Linux is not going anywhere. If anything, its dominance in those areas continues to grow. The exodus, if it happens, would be more about perception and visibility than actual usage numbers. It would be about Linux losing mindshare among general users, creators, and newcomers, even as it remains foundational behind the scenes. There is also a strong countercurrent to consider. Dissatisfaction with mainstream operating systems has not disappeared. Subscription creep, forced updates, advertising, telemetry, and lockdown ecosystems continue to frustrate users. Every time a major platform makes a controversial decision, interest in alternatives spikes. Linux often benefits from these moments, serving as a pressure valve for people who want out. The question is whether Linux can convert that momentary interest into long-term adoption, or whether users will bounce off and return to what they know. The Linux community itself plays a role in shaping the future. Community culture can be welcoming or alienating, patient or dismissive. Over the years, there has been criticism that Linux communities sometimes prioritize technical correctness over user empathy. While this has improved in many spaces, the reputation still lingers. In a world where users expect smooth onboarding and supportive experiences, community tone matters more than ever. Ah. If Linux wants to avoid an exodus, it must continue evolving not just technically, but socially. Another possibility is that the idea of ditching Linux is simply a reframing of what Linux means. Instead of being a desktop operating system people install directly. Linux may increasingly exist as an invisible layer accessed through containers, virtual machines, and cloud services. People might leave Linux in the sense that they no longer run it as their primary desktop OS, while still relying on it every day without realizing it. In that scenario, the exodus is less about abandonment and more about transformation. 
There is also the chance that dissatisfaction with centralized platforms will intensify rather than fade. Regulatory pressure, data breaches, AI misuse, and digital fatigue could push users to reevaluate their relationship with technology. In such a climate, Linux's values could regain relevance. But for that to happen, Linux distributions would need to meet users where they are. Offering simplicity without sacrificing freedom, polish without locking people in, and innovation without fragmentation. By 2026, the computing landscape will likely be more hybrid than ever. People will use multiple devices, multiple operating systems, and multiple environments seamlessly. Loyalty to a single OS may continue to erode across the board. Not just for Linux. In that sense, the question is not whether people will ditch Linux, but whether the concept of ditching an operating system still makes sense. When the OS fades into the background, what remains are workflows, services, and experiences. The great OS exodus, then, might not be a dramatic mass departure, but a quiet shift in how people relate to their tools. Linux will remain critical, powerful, and indispensable, yet less visible as a personal identity. For some long-time users, that might feel like a loss. For others, it might feel like a sign of maturity, proof that Linux has succeeded so thoroughly that it no longer needs to be defended or evangelized. In the end, 2026 is unlikely to be the year everyone ditches Linux in any absolute sense. But it could be a year when Linux's role on the desktop is questioned more openly. When expectations change, and when the community faces hard choices about direction, usability, and relevance. Whether that moment becomes a decline or a reinvention depends on how Linux adapts to a world that no longer thinks the way it once did. The Exodus narrative makes for a compelling headline, but the real story is quieter, more complex, and still being written.